Hello and welcome to another video of What in the Lore, and in today's video we are going to be talking about the race known as the Makote, and that will entail the Seekers of the Sun and the Keepers of the Moon, and all that good, fun stuff. Now let's get right down into it. During the Age of Endless Frost, as the seas turned to ice and passage over them became possible, Arosa saw an influx of foreign fauna to her shores. This in turn brought the hunting tribes which subsided upon them, the modern descendants of whom are today known as the Makote. Since then, the Makote have diverged into two physically distinguishable groups, the dinerial Seekers of the Sun and the Nocturnal Keepers of the Moon. Both groups share a superb olfactory sense and powerful leg muscles, result of a long evolution geared towards hunting and predation. Comparatively few in number, they maintain an insular group mentality, tending to avoid contact with the other races. Many individuals lead isolated lifestyles, even when residing in more populous cities. Though their presence in Erosia is lesser than that of the other races, the Makote are easily distinguished by their large, projecting ears and restless feline tails. The ancestors of this line first made their way to the realm during the Age of Endless Frost, once again in the Fifth Umbral Era, traversing the frozen seas in pursuit of the wildlife upon which they subsided, or hunted. Instinctually territorial causes many of them to lead solitary lifestyles. Males in particular are said to shy away from any contact, not of their own race. Now let's move on to the two groups within the Makote race. The self-proclaimed Seekers of the Sun are the dinerial clan of the Makote race. Their preference for the warm light of day pervades all aspects of their culture, as is apparent in their devout reverence to Azimia the Warden, Goddess of the Sun. They are perhaps known best for their striking eyes, the result of their vertically aligned pupils and faintly colored irises. Though relatively few in Erosia, a small number of them have been accepted into everyday life by the other races in the port city of Limza Lominza, others are known to make their home in the region of the Sagoli Desert. Some additional notes transcribed from the Vaki and Ulda. A true miracle of evolution at work. Though lean and flexible, they possess immense strength and stamina and excel at nearly any physical act be it bounding amongst the treetops or swimming in rough waters. Above all that, their powers of expression are also second to none. The nocturnal among the Makote have dubbed themselves the Keepers of the Moon. Shying from the garish light of day, they revel in the Shroud of Night, and offer their piety to Minfina the Lover, Goddess of the Moon. The custom of applying war paint to the face is still regularly practiced by the Keepers of the Moon, enhancing their already distinctive appearance. Their tradition of hunting in the thick woodlands of the Black Shroud have for years thrown them into conflict with the forest folk of Gridania, who condemn them as poachers. Of late, however, many Keepers of the Moon have found some small peace with Gridanians and taken to living within the city. Some additional notes transcribed from the Prosperlin in Gridania. The Keepers of the Moon are the more numerous of the two Makote clans you will see here in Gridania. Even so, their kind are few enough, as many and more care not for life in the city. They have the characteristic feline eyes and long swaying tails, and I dare say that in comparison to the Seekers of the Sun, they tend to be a bit more retent and reserved. Time was, our own god's quiver used to clash with the keepers that were out hunting in the Twelves Wood, but these days we deal with them friendly enough, trading what crops and hides are to be had. Alright, let's take a look at the naming conventions, and we're going to start off with the Seekers of the Sun. Most males have a simple one or two syllable names. The extra itches we see in names such as B, Kuz, and Posh represent a slight hissing, spitting sound that is made when the name is pronounced by the cat like Makote. Many of the other races in Erosia cannot accurately reproduce this sound, myself included. So the H's end up being silent when read, as follows B, Kuz, and Posh. The first name is always preceded by a letter representing their tribe. In the mass exodus which occurred during the fifth umbral era, 26 Seeker of the Sun tribes crossed the seas, which had been frozen solid as a result of the calamity, to Erosia in search of food and warmer climates. The names of these tribes contain many sounds which were difficult to represent with the existing Erosian alphabet, but the fact that there were the same exact number of tribes as letters in the Erosian alphabet was taken as a sign that they were destined to make the new realm their home and so assigned each tribe with a letter slash sound that was closest to its name. Over time, this resulted in the changing of the pronunciation to more closely resemble the pronunciation of the Erosian alphabet and letter assigned to it than that of the original word. 
The tribe names are originally based on traditional beastkin, scalekin, or cloudkin totems which are said to protect the tribe. Now for this next bit, I'm going to have them up on the screen and I will also have a copy of this down in the info section of this video. Just in case it went too fast so you guys don't want to keep going back and forth through the video. But alright, let's get it started. A for antelope. B for boar. C for kurul. D for dodo. E for eft. F for bear. G for griffin. H for Gigantoad, I for Buffalo, J for Jackal, K for Hipparion, L for Viper, M for Marmot, N for Eldgoat, O for Mole, P for Basilisk, Q for Puck, R for Raptor, S for Zoo, T for Condor, U for Drake, V for Vulture, W for Wolf, X for Lynx, Y for Jaguar, and Z for Ziz. As you guys can see, there is pronunciation and a short after each one of the ones I just described. I just write off the name of the animal, but it would just be pronounced like, you know, A, antelope, the pronunciation short would be ah. So that's what, you know, what would happen. Males do not take family names as they are each considered the origins of a new family. In place of a family name, they are given a title that denotes their tribe and their position within it. For a male seeker of the sun, there are only two positions available. Breeding males, pronounced noon, and all others, the Tia, pronounced T -a. All males are born as Tia. At any time in their lives, a Tia can challenge the tribe, Noon, to battle. If the Tia is victorious, he takes the Noon's place as tribe's breeding male, until he is challenged and defeated. And the Noon becomes a Tia once again, if he survives the ordeal. This is done to ensure that the tribe's offspring are of the finest stock. Depending on its size, a tribe may have multiple Noon. A ratio of one Noon per 10 to 50 females is average. There is only one other way a Tia can become Noon, and in, that is to leave his tribe and start his own. This, of course, requires several females to accomplish, and most female Seekers of the Sun are rarely impressed by a male who cannot defeat a Noon. Noon status does not equate to leadership within a tribe, and in fact, very few Noon ever become leaders. Pronunciation-wise, other than the tribe pronunciations listed above, names follow common English phonetics. Though followed by an apostrophe, the tribe sound is usually flows into the name. O-Raha would be pronounced O-Raha, not O-Ra-Ha. So O-Raha Tia, Obian Tia, Uda Nun, Uda Nun. Again, very flowing. Taking a look at the female Seekers of the Sun, a female first name will always begin with the letter representing her tribe, followed by an apostrophe, and then her given name. Her last name is the first name of the tribe's breeding male, Crusader. So for the example on screen are Shushimo Rahiki, Shushimo of the Raptors sired by Rahiki Noon, breeding male of the Raptors. The apostrophe pronunciation rule applies here as well. The first name, Yashtola, would be pronounced Yashtola, not Yashtola. And as you guys can see, I'm also having trouble doing this. And I've been practicing this, like, the past couple of days. So it's, it's something you just gotta get yourself accustomed to. Some other examples of the female names. I'll put them up on screen so you can see how they are written out. I'm not gonna even bother trying to pronounce these because I'll most likely butcher it. And I've already made a fool of myself enough, right? In colloquial speech, amongst close friends and companions, sometimes the tribe letter will be dropped from the first name. So... In this example, Flahaman would just drop the F at the beginning and just be known as Lahaman. Moving on to the Keepers of the Moon. The female Keepers of the Moon, unlike the Seekers of the Sun, the Keepers of the Moon is a highly matriarchal society with family names passed down from the mother, not the father. It is said that some of these surnames have survived since the first astral era. The Keepers of the Moon lead more solitary lives rarely forming communities of more than two or three families. Therefore, a tribal letter is not assigned to the names. The matriarchal strength is further displayed by the fact that the female first names are short, one, two-syllable constructions that closely resemble names used by the male seekers of the sun. 
Once again, unpronounced H's are also present in the names, as you can see from these four examples on screen. Moving on to the male. The male keepers of the moon. More evidence of how important the mother is to the keepers of the moon can be seen when looking at the names given to the males. In addition to taking the mother's surname, males also take the mother's forename, adding a suffix separated by an apostrophe, to the end to designate the order in which they were born. So the first son would have an A, the second son, two, or To, third son, Li, fourth son, Se, fifth son, Ra, sixth son, Er, seventh son, Wo, eighth son, Ya, ninth son, Z, tenth son, Tan. And here are four names that you can use as an example to kind of see how it would go in the actual name. Now, though there are ten suffixes listed in the video, as well as down below in the information section of this video, rarely do even the largest keeper of the moon families have more than two or three sons. This is not by choice. Nature merely sees to it that more females are born to this race. Thank you guys for checking out and watching this video. It has been What in the Lore is Makote, and it's actually quite long, so thank you guys for bearing through with me and watching it. Uh, all the music and stuff like that, the images, the music, it's all from Square Enix, it's all them. I just put it together into this nice little video for you guys to watch, so thank you. If there's any feedback or anything like that that I can, you know, take and improve upon this, by all means, post below in the comments. If you guys want to see a city state or a certain beast can or primals or something like that, post down below and I'll make sure to do them before what I already have scheduled, you know, catering to you guys. But next time, as of right now, the video I have planned is the Rogadin. And that one is, that's a mouthful right there. So it'll be really fun. So until next time, guys.